Hi everyone, Mike and Michelle here with My Graberhood, and we want to welcome you to Transparent Tuesday. Yes, well we're going to share the good, the bad, or the ugly with you every week, and just kind of something that we have learned, maybe um, the hard way throughout this week, or just something we've read and studied and applied to our lives and kind of thought back and how um, we got through it in marriage, so... Yes, we were thinking about marriage this week. I was reading a book this week, uh, some of a book, The Meaning of Marriage by Tim Keller. And we'll put a link to that below. Uh, and got some good thoughts from it, uh, some things to think about. And it made me think about some other things also. Talking about the subject of marriage and finding the perfect mate, or at least the philosophy of finding the perfect mate and uh, desiring to have a perfect marriage and the whole, I guess, attitude towards marriage. Generally in our culture right now, there is a decline. There is a, a pessimism towards marriage. There's a decline of young people wanting to get married. Uh, less young people are getting married. More of them are just living together uh, mm -hmm. for extended periods of time. And I believe there's a change in attitude that's caused that. Yes, they seem to be more of a me culture of what can I get from marriage and how can um, this person help me and how will it benefit me? Am I still going to be able to go do what I want to do? All that kind of stuff kind of filters into this whole concept of trying to find the perfect mate. That's what's so interesting about it because the attitude towards marriage has become more negative when all the while, the desire of people is to find a perfect person who's going to serve them. Whereas the old spirit towards marriage was, I am joining in matrimony with this person. I'm joining together with this person who I'm going to serve. I'm going to serve them. And we're joining together for a common purpose and we're going to have children, have a family, and that family is, is above our own personal needs, whereas now it's all about our own needs. I tell you, that totally goes against culture right now because, and I'm going to say this as a woman, because some of y'all just heard what he said and you're like, uh-uh, I would not want to be married to that man. Just because it says, he said, serving each other. And again, it's serving each other. It's not just me serving him. It's also him serving me it's a mutual thing and it should come i don't want to say naturally because it doesn't come naturally but you do it out of love and it's a commitment that you make with each other right the whole attitude is i'm i'm serving this other person that's the, the goal and if both people are doing it then you have a marriage that is bliss when both individuals are seeking to be served you have a marriage made in hell basically <laughs> yeah and a lot of times people want to change the other spouse and you go into a marriage it's funny you can go into the marriage thinking I'm gonna change that person <laughs> but that's the wrong um, viewpoint on it you need to go in the marriage and knowing that you're you are gonna change and I'm so thankful everybody said oh marry the perfect person well if I married the perfect person I was 19 and he was 20 at the time I'm so glad that perfect person is not the same person now that he was then. And I know he's thankful that I'm not the 19-year-old girl that he married. We grew together. That's right. You will change. The perfect, the perfect couple is going to change anyways over time. So that means that they're not perfect anymore, I guess. But hopefully we'll be improving each other in this marriage relationship. When we get married, we all know that um, we have flaws. And that person is there to help us grow and to help challenge us. And um, granted, we shouldn't want the other person, you know, we shouldn't go into a marriage to say, I'm going to change that person. But to know that I'm, I'm going to challenge that person. And mm -hmm. I know I challenged you quite well. Amen. <laughs> But it's okay to challenge someone. Us, um, as human beings, we have that need inside to be fulfilled, to have goals, to make those goals, to have commitments, to have our dreams, just to have a dream and to actually meet those dreams. And the fulfillment and the satisfaction that we have is something that is a need we have. What are some 
What's another reason that people put such a high standard on their potential spouse, do you think? Fear? I think it is. A lot of young people, or a lot of people, they have such high standards for their potential mate. What they're really saying is, I just want to be alone. <laughs> I'm, I'm too fearful to, to make this commitment to marriage, to marry someone. And uh, it, whether they're fearful that the marriage will fall apart or they won't measure up or whatever their fears are, they place this huge, amazing high standard for their potential spouse, like their personal ad, say, is talking yes. about this Prince Charming. He's got to uh, have Kierkegaard memorized and uh, have what him, memorized? <laughs> some poetry, you know. Oh. And <laughs> no idea what you're he's talking pulling about. down seven figures a year income, you know, graduated from home. Harvard. Right. They've got these huge standards uh, for this potential mate because they basically don't want to find anyone who matches up to those standards. Yeah, there's a fear. And there's a, a huge movement on uh, not getting married, um, just to go ahead and stay single. And um, the instead of saying, I do, say, I don't. And that is such a wrong perspective. Um, it's all based on, well, then I can do whatever I want to do. I have this freedom, right? And this liberty to be able to... <clears throat> You know, not be tied down with children, not to be tied down to one man. I can, you know, if I don't like him, I can trade him in. Finding that person, perfect person is not like test driving a car, okay? I don't care what society says. It's not. Do You find that person and you grow. You don't go through the heartaches and pain of divorce and leaving and, and tearing your heart apart. And um, you have that commitment with that person and you grow and you grow in love towards that person. So basically, it's okay to marry an imperfect person because we are all uh, imperfect people. Mm -hmm. And we need to realize in that marriage, we are actually going to have to change. I'm going to have to give up something. I'm going to have to change over time because basically, uh, time's going to change us. Time, our circumstances, experiences, our successes, our failures, all those things are going to change us. Yeah. That's kind of what the perfect marriage actually is. Yeah, so just think of this. The imperfect marriage is two imperfect people that come together to create this environment of acceptance and also an environment of being able to challenge each other and to be able to encourage each other, to be able to reach our goals and our dreams and to kind of push each other. And to help, this will all help develop the purpose in marriage and why God implemented that in the first place so yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right <clears throat> so you're not gonna find the perfect person no <laughs> give it up already <laughs> <clears throat> what do you want to hear in the future put it in the comments and maybe we can muse on it yeah Is that, that's the right word muse yeah. Chew on it. While I was musing, the fire burned. Oh, which reminds me. Faith Field Fridays. Join him for Faith Field Fridays. This Friday. Thanks for watching.